and with that information it sends that particular information with the query execution plan to a particular selected virtual warehouse which was selected right at the step one this one topic has been requested by many of you in the comment section uh, you have always requested me to make something on snowflake but the problem is i myself have never worked on snowflake i have never uh, got an opportunity so far to implement any kind of snowflake solution and uh, that's why i was not able to you know get into this area but what i have now decided is that whatever understanding i have gained with my research i will at least pass that on to you and then uh, you can take your own journey uh, exploring more into snowflake so in this video we will understand what exactly snowflake is what are some basic concepts and features of snowflake how it's high level architecture works what are some key components and also a very simple end to end user workflow so by the end of this video i'm pretty sure you'll have a fair understanding of what is snowflake and how basically it works at a high level it's going to be an interesting session so without further ado let's get started so friends let's start with understanding the basic concept of snowflake so in a very layman term snowflake is a analytics database or you can call it as data warehouse as a service you can deploy snowflake on any of the cloud providers you can integrate snowflake on any of these clouds or any other cloud which is supported with snowflake so you can say that snowflake is nothing but a data warehouse solution or a data warehouse component sitting on a cloud now how snowflake is different snowflake is different because it has a multi cluster shared architecture what does that mean so generally if you see in database uh, terms we have two types of architecture one is where you know you have multiple nodes uh, talking to a single uh, uh, database instance and then there would be multiple compute nodes and the other one is where is nothing is shared every node has its own replica or our own database running within that particular node and then all the nodes are connected with each other but they have those nodes have their specific uh, database instance running within so at one end we have a shared architecture and in other we have shared nothing architecture but then snowflake combines the benefits and the goods of both these architecture and comes up with something what we call as multi cluster shared architecture which we'll understand in the detailed architecture uh, view of snowflake but then it combines best of the both the worlds where you have a central storage but in order to execute those storage you have different uh, compute resources surrounding it so we'll see that in detail but apart from that from benefit standpoint it is first of all very user friendly it is faster flexible scalable and the pricing of snowflake is depends on the kind of data you are using and what kind of processing you want to do on top of that data so your uh, data which is getting which will be stored in your uh, central data storage as well as the warehouses which will be created to run or execute queries you know these two main components will derive the total cost uh, of uh, of you running snowflake in your area so a user can simply install any client or any uh, ui for uh, snowflake and connect uh, directly with snowflake from uh, his or her client machine okay so th there is a separate layer which enables that again it will be covered in the architecture view so snowflake in totality is nothing more than a data warehouse which is provided to you on the cloud and it is very very flexible now we'll go little deeper and we'll understand what different layers we have in a snowflake architecture and how these layers are interrelated and what are the key components which forms this overall architecture so friends this is the high level architecture of snowflake and as you can see there are three different components visible here so let's understand how all these three components work together so at the heart of snowflake architecture sits the storage so storage is your central area where all the tables and the views will be stored data can be stored in both the formats structured and uh, unstructured so you can have your database tables so it's uh, you know this particular storage database uh, will uh, support all kind of where care integer uh, float 
all kind of relational data types as well as unstructured data in Avro, Parquet, JSON format as well. So this is our main storage layer. So uh, you know this this is where you will have your tables and on those tables you will have your views everything will be stored here now on top of it you have your compute layer now this compute layer is the unique feature of snowflake where you create what we call as virtual warehouses these virtual warehouses are you know connected to that specific platform where this particular snowflake is deployed so for example if the snowflake is deployed on gcp then it is somewhere connecting to you know a gcp compute instance for example and that particular resource will be you know will be utilized with uh, you know with this virtual warehouse so your virtual warehouses could scale up and scale down based on the need so you can have a very small size warehouse virtual warehouse and at the same time you can have uh, a very big or large uh, warehouse also and the beauty is you can scale up or scale down you know on demand based as as you know as your uh, need changes uh, it can scale up or scale down and that's where the compute resources of your gcp or aws or azure instances would come uh, you know come into picture because those needs to be scaled up or scaled down simultaneously so these virtual warehouses are the actual areas where the queries will get executed although the data will be you know data will be coming from your central storage and all these virtual warehouses will run uh, in parallel so there is, uh, you know, there is no deadlock. So all these uh, virtual warehouses based on the needs will continuously fetch the data from the central data store and run the run the queries. So this is uh, the, you know, the main worker of uh, the Snowflake architecture. So this is our compute area. On top of it sits the services. Now services is you know your point of entry into this architecture also uh, this is the main uh, workhorse which manages different aspect operational aspect of snowflake so the first one relates to your user authentication or session management we have to ensure that whenever any user is logging in it is a legitimate user the second one is more to do with managing these virtual warehouses the data updates happening or the data access happening through these virtual warehouses that is where this particular uh, service uh, comes in handy the third one manages the overall service of the snowflake so be it communicating with the uh, cloud resources is concerned or be it you know because these uh, warehouses will be deployed in multiple availability zone in a cloud for uh, you know for horizontal scalability and availability all those kind of scaling needs will be managed by uh, your services uh, with this particular aspect so coming to the last part this uh, this particular component of the services layer uh, manages the connectivity part of snowflake so all the end users how they will connect they will have their own laptops or machines with which they will you know install some sort of a jdbc or odbc drivers so using those client drivers you can connect to your snowflake server or virtual warehouses or apart from that you can also use different business intelligence and etl tools to connect to uh, snowflake also snow sql is a proprietary uh, and end user product which can be used to run queries directly on uh, snowflake uh, data so this is what connectivity component provides in this particular service layer so all these things all these roles are played by the services layer okay and it is very very important because this is the point of entry for any request uh, into uh, the snowflake architecture so friends this is a very simple user workflow of a user trying to connect to a snowflake uh, data warehouse and trying to run a query so at step one, uh, the user will connect using any of the client uh, drivers which we discussed previously. It could be ODBC, JDBC, SnowSQL or from GUI. And then that particular uh, you know, request will come to the services layer in, at step two. Okay, But at step one also, it has to specify right at the beginning which particular warehouse it, it wants to run the query against. So that's why I've highlighted this one as red because there are multiple warehouses floating within the compute, right? So it has to be specified against which warehouse you have to run the query. 
So once that is done, at step two, services layer, you know, first of all, authenticates the user, whether it is a genuine user or not. And then based on the, uh, you know, on the request, it creates an query execution plan. And with that information, it sends that particular information with the query execution plan to a particular selected virtual warehouse, which was selected right at the step one. And then the virtual warehouse takes that query and uh, using its compute resources runs it against the central storage layer and then whatever result comes it is returned back to the user. So yes it is a very simple workflow to understand how Snowflake works. Again the feature the best feature of Snowflake is it is very intuitive and user friendly. So uh, sorry friends, I missed one important component in the services layer, uh, which uh, is very important and which is metadata management. I missed this while we were discussing the architecture part. So let's quickly cover this. So metadata management is obviously important in, in any uh, database management system, but specifically in this uh, Snowflake area, it provides some very good advanced features, which is zero copy cloning, time travel, and data sharing capabilities. Now these are some advanced concepts. So maybe as I learn more and as I explore more, I'll maybe, uh, you know, make a video on these advanced capabilities as well. So friends, with this, we have come to an end of this video. Uh, we understood some basic concepts of Snowflake. We understood its features, its benefits. We understood three layers and its components, how it works together in Snowflake architecture. Then we started with our user workflow where a user logs in and tries to run a query to understand how all these components work together. So friends, I hope you liked this video and it added some value uh, and you now have a fair understanding or some rough understanding of what is Snowflake and how exactly it works. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you exactly know when I upload my next video. In your comments, I get so many great ideas. So please feel free to add whatever you want to learn. If I know it, I'll share it right away. If this is something which I don't know, I will do my studies and then share my understanding like what I did in this case. So until next time, guys, please keep learning, keep sharing all the knowledge and yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.